to the Champions League group that we got looks a little bit like this. Barcelona, Club Bruges and Atalanta. Perhaps unsurprisingly, I brought you back for the Barcelona game. So of course we last met with the first match of the season against Leeds, where admittedly, I did put it in the edit, but I realised whilst editing that not only did we have a missed penalty, we had a disallowed goal that should have stood. So realistically, that should have been three points for us if it wasn't robbed. I should have been more angry at the end of that match than I actually was. But since then, we put that disappointment to one side, for the most part. Five goals scored against Stoke and Everton without a goal conceded. Lovely jubbly. Both away from home as well. Everton, especially impressive in that regard, I would argue. Brighton at home, 3-2. Two goals in the first two minutes. I thought, hello. Third one came on the 14th, and I was a little bit worried for Brighton at that point. There was a fourth goal that was disallowed in this one. Questionable in its disallowance as well, I think, from what I remember. It was a little while ago now. Brighton made it a little bit nervy though. Two goals, they clawed back and thankfully we saw that one out. And then, well, Chelsea happened. They scored twice in four minutes. We did get a late penalty. Consolation, it looks like on paper. When you look at the stats, it was a lot more tight than the scoreline may have suggested in the 92nd minute. Anyway, that's for certain. A 2-0 really did not flake the game. Yeah, three clear cut to one. We had four half to their one, so it sort of vaguely cancels itself out. You probably argue a draw on paper, looking at the stats, but no, they edged it. Away at the bridge, not not a massive disappointment when you look at it in the grand scheme of things, but in the moment, can't help but feel a little bit disappointed. The response to losing to Chelsea, though, was emphatic. I mean, I say Atalanta are decent. We did demolish them. Yeah, we, we demolished them with a pretty rotated side as well. I started Ewan Barwick, who is regarded as... Our fifth or fourth choice centre mid, where is he now? Apparently as good as Ivan Seri. Hmm, not sure on that one. I will reel there, but yeah, f five grand a week though. I thought he was one of the people who I delegated the new renewal for. Apparently not, but yeah, you can see he's just pretty handy, quite fast. Mentals are pretty good all around and technicals are pretty good all around. Very much rotated. And a homegrown player who's come through our academy, you gotta love it. But both he and Kovalev scored in this particular match. I'm going to show you Barwick's goal because, well, there's Xiaonan getting tackled. Cantoro lays it off for of Barwick and as a fourth choice, trying to make a stamp. Yep. And you know what? This was a demolition. You weren't part of this, so I'm going to make you feel a little bit more part of it. Here's Kovalev's goal. So two players who don't necessarily start. Two young players. Yeah, they're... they're, they're mm. Two young players that are now giving me a little bit of a headache whether or not to play them more. I say that as if I wasn't playing Kovalev fairly regularly towards the end of last year. Uh, Barwick then scored in the following match, a 5-1 thumping of Crystal Palace. 11 goals in those two matches and another three against Aston Villa with a probably even more rotated side. Aston Villa, I think they were relegated last year, so recently Premier League Aston Villa. With the squad we've got, we can't necessarily properly disrespect anyone anymore. I did start David Battams. It's actually now worth 21 and a half million, maybe partially because he was one of the people that we gave a new contract to, or my director of football did. Not quite sure he's worth 45 grand a week, Mr. Director, but never mind. Uh, what that does mean, though, is the Premier League looks a little bit like this. Only one team unbeaten, actually, after six games, and that's Manchester City, who... Have they played any major sides? They have beaten Tottenham away and Arsenal at home, and had a draw with Chelsea. They've actually had a fairly tough start, considering. Chris Coyle's on a nine average after six games. What the bloody hell's he been doing? Not in the top assists, not in the top goals. How has he got a 9 average? They've won 5-0, 6-3, 4-2. 3 away at Newcastle. How has he got a 9 average? He's only played three times, so I can only imagine he's only played in the big scoring ones. Good oy, though. You can see that there. Five goals so far this year. He has started sensationally, which is exactly what we need from him in particular this year. Newcastle, though, great start from them. 11 points after six games, despite the first week's disappointment. As a Newcastle fan, love it. But our first match today is against Manchester United, a team, of course, who run us to the title the past couple of years and on exactly the same record as us right now. 13 points, 4 wins, 1 draw, 1 loss. That being said, historically, we have the marginal advantage on them, although they are regarded as favourites for this one today. They are the Premier League favourites. We're back up to 4-1 to one on that one as well now. Now, the possible good news right now is the fact that Emery Azata is back-ish. Since he's returning to fitness, I don't know where to play him now. The sad news is, Shaunan is injured though, but Fiore, look at the comparison though. You look at complete wing-back comparison. How... How, when comparing him to Shaunan, who has a fuller circle in complete wingback, how is he regarded less good in that? The only thing he doesn't have is whatever off is short for. Off the ball, which is still 15. Worth noting as well, the rest of the European transfer window went largely without an incident. We didn't sell anyone for money. We did send some power out on loan, and that was it. That was it for interest for our players. Arguably, at this stage, we could have lost, say, like a player like Castillo, because then we have three left-backs. 
that we can use, but right now he's apparently our best one. So Castillo will start this one with Azata and Rick in that battle. I'm gonna I have to risk Azata because it's Azata. But yeah, Azata and Rick in the back line with Fiore on the right, Christian in goal, of course, after stepping out for the Carabao match. Vidarsen and Seri, Ramirez, Vidal, and Cantora on that front line with Gonzalez up front. In fact, Godoy is back. He was I think he was rotated out for the Aston Villa match as well. But you can see there, the bench stat with stat with strikers, Silver and Gonzalez there. We have employed the 4-3-3 on occasion to middling effect it has to be said we're in a situation right now where scott parkinson doesn't make the bench just because courage and shaunan are both injured medina's the only other one with a modicum of capability at right back sending a power out on loan seems sensible before that happened or kovalev doesn't even make does kovalev make the bench do i trust him more than saxton at this stage in time my logic brain says no my heart says yes i've gone with my brain on this one we are the lunchtime kickoff by the way so there's no other games going on at this point in time Therefore, there's no need to have later scores on elsewhere. This high started with their goalkeeper gaining the ball, so marginally worried they're going to get get a counter-attack. And now, bizarrely, or maybe not that bizarrely, they sign Stefano Venturelli, Venturelli from Norwich, but they also have another Venturelli in their side. I think they signed both of them this year. I'm not certain when they signed whoever A Venturelli is, but I remember a certain while ago that I got confused by Venturelli's. There was one at Milan, I think. Yeah, he was. He was signed last year, in fact. So perhaps incredibly confusingly for their own players, they have Venturelli's on both wings. I'm just imagining, I think it's Thomas Tuchel on the on the sidelines for them, just shouting, give it to Venturelli! And all the players going, which one? Azata, forward to Castillo though. We have no such issues in that front. Godoy has got ahead of his marker there. Skimmed the bar. Skimmed the bar. That's the sort of chance we need to be taking. And Godoy has been taking those lately. 25 minutes in, there's been five shots in the entire game. So getting your money's worth. I was about to say that's a lovely switch of play before it ended up at Aaron's rather than our... Player, Venturelli, I don't know what he's done there, other than perhaps shackle Fiore there, or just Vulcan nerve pinched him. Neck pinch? Nerve pinch. I always forget. But whatever he did, he just caused Fiore to stop moving. Meanwhile, the rest of that highlight ran itself out thanks to an offside. Worth it. Ramirez, back to Vidarsson. I'm not really sure what that ball is, but it's worked. Godoy's still on it. Godoy's still on it. Vidal, not quite. Vidal? Vidal! Right. Um, In complete honesty here, 30 seconds before Vidal put that in, I would not have predicted that's how that highlight was going to end. The second, Vida the second Vidal second hoofed that over to the right-hand side, I was pretty much certain they were going to get the ball. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just seeing what their goalkeeper did. Valiant, valiant effort there, Paolo are. but oh dear. S. Ventral needs to hoof that off, off to Duque, and Christian closed that quite nicely. Considering his attribute spread seems to favour sweeper keeper defend, he did a little bit more on that one there. Did rush out. Hello, this time it's continued. Christian's still got the ball here. I was slightly, slightly confused by that continuing, considering it came from a corner from their highlight. So I figured that was, you know, highlight over. But no, we've had an opportunity at this end. It's hit, I think, both woodwork and crossbar there. Woodwork and crossbar. You know what I mean? I can say, yeah. I can say Christian's rushing out tendency isn't that good. We're in an awkward position right now, but where are both our centre backs are now booked. So marginally concerned about that for the rest of this match. But Castillo's got past S Venturelli. Castillo, he's gone for it himself, which was a bit selfish. Like, so we're half time here, and I, for a moment before I started clicking the options for the team talk, forgot we were 1-0 up. I nearly said I was disappointed. I've gone for, you weren't that bad, but you can still improve, essentially. I will maintain that there needs to be an option that's sort of on the lines of, I'm slightly disappointed in what I've seen. I sort of straight up says that. Godoy goes close again, because there certainly definitely needs to be one between, I'm disappointed and things are going well, but you're capable of even better. They've taken one of the Venturellis off, and I've just had the sudden thought that, Perhaps when they went to sign the first Venturelli, they were just given the instructions like, right, we need to send, we need to sign that Venturelli. He's a good player. They went out and signed the Milan one, came back and went, look, we got him, and went, not that one. Uh, so this year they've gone out and signed the other one. Vidal, that's nicely worked to Fiore, who's got himself over the pitch, as he does like to do, according to his trait. Cantoro, back to Fiore, series on the edge of the box, enough time to turn and smash it in. That one, that one I did see coming. As soon as... As it was passed, pretty much as soon as it was passed back to Fiore here, and I saw Seri on the edge of the box, I just knew what was coming. I knew he was going to have a crack at it. Didn't think Paolo Cesar would just not move at all. Bear in mind he's on a 7.1 despite conceding two goals here. How, what? Good, well, Godoy scored, and suddenly it's three. Seven goals for the season in total for Godoy. He scored one elsewhere from the league. And, I mean, Cesar, Cesar's nowhere. Dipped him to a 7.0. How? He's conceded three goals. How is he on a 7? Christian, poor Christian conceded none on a 6.9. Unbelievable. Now, Cantoro and Vidarsson seem to be the two lacking right now. 
My issue with that, of course, is the fact that we don't really have anyone else for Cantoro, but I do need him for midweek. The dance for Grimes is straightforward. Gonzalez on that right side. I mean, what I can do is straight up play Godoy as an inside forward on that right side if I want to and just play Gonzalez up front. Because I am trying to train him there, of course. And considering that playing him out of position only weakens mentals, apparently, according to the official line, and his mentals are pretty good to start with, hopefully that isn't too much of a detriment to Godoy out there. He's taken an injury. Fantastic news. That's what we needed. In that case, we just bring Silver on and just play him off the main striker. Yeah, Silver can't play in either of the winger ringer roles or inside forward roles as they are in mine. Duque, 92 minutes in. If they get three goals here, I'm going to be incredibly irritated. I'm not sure what's going on here. They've got one back. I mean, he's running back, bless him, is Mabry. But yeah, Duque. I mean, it's a great ball to Hamburg there. If he had a better first touch and not nearly run it off the pitch. But thankfully, he's got away with it in their eyes and laid it off to Mabry, who sleeping on a little bit. You can probably argue, but as it said, nothing more than a consolation. Victor Vidal made his 200th career appearance. Rick's made 175 appearances as well. He's 22. So is Vidal. They're both 22, and they've made 375 career appearances between them. Sorry, that's Rick's 175th career appearance for York. He's only been here six years. I mean, when you look at it like that, you do have to question why he wasn't starting once upon a time. Now he is. I mean, that that's, that's a fantastic result, really. 3-1 against Manchester United. The Ian Theory best team in the league. Good always only have for two days, thank God. And Seri, who has been a little bit absent this year so far. I mean, you look at that. Leeds was the first game. Obviously, he missed a penalty in that first one. Not above a seven in any game so far until now. Welcome back, Ivan Seri. Welcome back. Admittedly, came on against Atalanta and managed to publish one assist and a 6.9. So that is not that bad when you look at that. So yeah, Barcelona coming up. Uh, in terms of the registration for that, hilariously, because of the way our team set up with homegrown players, Callum Nacelle is registered for the Champions League. He's actually registered for the Premier League as well. Because when it came to the end of it, we had 24 players and one free non-foreign spot left. And Callum Nacelle was the only player who fit that bill. So I figured, why not? Because most of our English players right now are under 21. Barwick just ticked over this year to 22, I think. Or over 21 at the very least. But the rest of them don't need to be registered. So he gets his testimonial and then he's registered for every competition. Nobody wanted him for, on loan, seemingly, either, which was bizarre. Irritatingly, we play Club Bruges third and fourth in our group. Barcelona is the last game in the group as well. If we'd already sealed our group progression by that point, I would have been very tempted to play Nacelle in that last game. Huh. <laughs> Interesting... I always avoid these questions in my own press conferences because it inevitably goes wrong, but Klopp's decided that Jean-Claire Tadibo is the answer to Gabriel Godoy. Let's find out, shall we? I mean, he's very good in this save. He's quite remarkably Christian, the goalkeeper, average rating 7.1, got second in the young player of the month. You have to ask what are the rest of the young players doing to not be in 7.1 average rating for an entire month. 6.93 was third. Godoy winning actual player of the month will give Tadibo second thoughts. The injury said one to two days. He's... Yeah, not good. This is four days later, so slightly annoyed at this. Realistic though, he's good enough that if we need him later on, we can do. We're at home as well, so we won't be playing in a defensive formation today. And it's exactly the same lineup, except for, except for that striker change. No one else is tied. Azart is back to actually entirely full fitness. The pre-game highlighted Reynaldo. Now, obviously, the entire team's very good, and he's worth 70... He's worth... Se what? Apparently a left-sided player, but they're forcing him to play centrally today. Was it Porto? I mean, he's good. All right. He's not their best player, though. Weirdly, I didn't get asked about Sergio Dutra in the press match. I'll get asked about loan players I had for six months, but no, not a player I had for seven years. Their striker's the best player, Rio. The fact they've got Ansu Fadi on the left-hand side instead of the player that was apparently their best player, according to the, my scouts or whoever gives me that information, uh, kind of says everything about that, really, doesn't it? Fatty's ridiculous. Fiore has missed. No, it's a good save by Dutra. Oh God, we're playing Dutra. I mean, I was I was well aware we were playing Dutra. I literally said it about 30 seconds ago, but oh, I feel really sad now because now I have to score against him. Like the fact we were playing Dutra, I was well aware of that. What that meant has only just sunk in. But there's Fatty in the number seven shirt. Cigara. There's a reason why he's number seven as well. Rodriguez, Castillo, back to uh, Christian... I just, by the way, I love how the Barcelona have a Reynaldo. It's almost as if they went, well, you know, Ronaldo's gone. So, and he was at Real Madrid. So it's time for us to have our own version. It's it's very much the, uh, just copy your homework, but not close enough for it to be obvious that we've copied it situation. Because, oh, this has got through here, though. He's got through here. He's got through here. Dutra doesn't like a big match. Let's remember that. And it's actually only seven minutes in. I feel like it should be, hang on, what was, can I go back and just see what Vidarsson did there? Oh, you, mm, that, mm. Yeah, sorry, I just had to watch that bit where he went through the players. He sort of almost manhandled his way through the defence there, which, you know, you like to see. Bit of physicality there. Shrugging off the defenders. Ah, Fatty has 
made easy work of Fiore there. And well, at least he's got back into position here. Fatty's gone all the way across and been forced to a bit of an angle. And that, that was it. That was the highlight. Fatty might have caused Fiore a tight hamstring. He's not injured enough. Like the tight hamstring hasn't actually caused really any physical condition to Fiore. We might take him off in the second, just the second half, just to preserve him. Bear in mind the situation we've got defensively otherwise. Both Courage and Xiao Nan. Actually, no, Xiao Nan. Is Xiao Nan back? Xiao Nan's not back yet. Oh no, Xiao Nan's not back yet. I thought I had Xiao Nan on the bench. The only other player I can put that out there is Medina. I, right, no, nope, change of plan. Fiore stay on as long as bloody possible because Fiore is my only other option. Vidarsson, Cantoro. Seri. Oh, he's found Gazzales with a lovely ball there, and that's a sensational... Seven goals for him as well this year. That's snuck under the radar a little bit. I thought he wasn't scoring. He's got two in this game, though. It was a pre-match question regarding Gonzalez's international commitments and whether or not he should get a call-up. The Spain manager said, I don't see him the same way as Watson does. Me. So, we're talking about myself in the third person there, but um, have another look, Michelle, because he's just put two past Barcelona's goalkeeper, who was Admittedly mine, I've just noticed on the right-hand side a certain goal scorer for PSV. Yep, that is Ruben van Gastel. PSV bought him from Barnsley in what must be one of the bizarrest transfers in terms of pairings you're likely to see. He has developed quite nicely, actually, away from us. Just well-rounded. PSV, yeah, he's decent for PSV, you'd probably argue. High Championship, low Premier League. Oh, you love to see it. Because we're, sort of we're sort of at that point in the game world where we've had players come through us and go to other places. Either they've just not developed well enough or they've been... We've got, we've got really, we've held on to those really good players that we want to keep for the most part. But there's sort of those players that may not necessarily cut it, but still good enough for teams like PSV, for instance. And they've gone out into the world and gone to those places. And we're sort of seeing that Ramirez has made it 3-0, by the way. Barcelona hate us. It did say in the pre-match gump that we've never lost to Barcelona. And, well... I mean, unless something remarkable happens here, Dutra has had a shocker there with that particular save. And their answer, apparently, to 3-0 is bringing a 32-year-old Marcus Rashford on for their star striker. Azata. Azata has scored from a corner. He scored from a set piece. Surely, of all people, Sergio Dutra knows what, th what threat Azata is from a set piece. Surely, Dutra, of all people should be setting up his defenders right now to stop that kind of thing from happening. Jean-Claire Tadebo has had an absolute shocker. In fairness, he was trained to, he was trained to deal with Godoy, who I've not even brought on. We bamboozled Jurgen Klopp here. Oh, your strategy is to deal with Godoy, is it? Well, we won't play him then. Gonzalez. Gonzalez has scored a hand. It's 5-0. Meanwhile, Club Bruges and Atalanta are playing out a draw. Jonathan Gonzalez has a hat-trick here. Bear in mind, actually, he was in at Valencia last year, so he will have played against Dutra last year. Twice, at the bare minimum. But yeah, their answer to going 3-0 down was to take Fran Rio off, who looks a little bit like this, and to bring on a 33-year-old, in fact, Marcus Rashford, who admittedly is actually physically still pretty good. But yeah, really? I mean, they've just brought Werner Bender on the right-hand side, who is probably a better striker than both of them, as a striker-striker. And yeah, that is the Bender that Man City bought for 138 million years ago. Had a ridiculous first... first had an absolutely ridiculous... January to end the season after they bought him and then not really ever after. That's one of the weirdest histories stat-wise I've ever seen. Just had like one sensational half a season. It's 5-0. Medina can play a little bit of right back. Screw it. Barwick can play a bit. Ramirez is smidge tired so Godoy can come on a little bit and just hover on that left-hand side. He is left-footed. Three Making three changes usually just kills a game anyway, so... And it has. I'm not entirely certain what I've just witnessed. Stoyan Stefanov has had an absolute mare in his prediction. How can I do anything but say passionately? Goalkeeper's on a seven. One to three days for Yuri, he's all right. And in terms of bringing you back, I'm in a weird sort of predicament in this sense because between Barcelona and, well, Barcelona again, there's only really this Arsenal-Man City doubleheader that's sort of vaguely banner-worthy, if that's the right word for it. All the other teams, there's a Tottenham game, of course, but that's... Literally like two games away. I, I want to progress a little bit faster through these years now. Now that we've won the Premier League twice and Champions League is our only real main focus left in terms of winning something new, pr it's pretty much only the major Premier League sides, the ones that we're fighting to retain our title against and obviously the Champions League progression that I'm super interested in now. Obviously, I love this team, but I don't want to sort of bore you, if that makes sense, with teams that we're not challenging against is probably the best way of phrasing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target the Arsenal and Man City doubleheader down here. It's a long way away, so if I don't get to it by tomorrow's episode, for whatever reason, then sorry. But Arsenal and Man City is the next one. We'll do Barcelona and West Brom after that, of course, to tie off the group. 
And then in January, we've got Tottenham and Liverpool back-to-back -back there. So we'll probably do that as well. By the way, we've got Portsmouth in the Carabao Cup, so that's a bit of a nothing thing. But that's sort of the plan for the rest of these episodes this week, I think. So until then, ta -ra.